the Council is ready to proceed to the vote on the draft resolution before it. Members of the Council have before them document S-2015-508. The text of a draft resolution submitted by Jordan, Lithuania, Malaysia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and the United States of America. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements before the vote. I give the floor to the uh, Russian Federation. Я благодарю вас, господин председатель. Мы собрались здесь сегодня, чтобы отдать дань памяти всех жертв чудовищных преступлений, совершенных в Сребренице и ее окрестностях два десятилетия назад. Господин председатель, прежде всего я просил бы вас объявить минуту молчания. Thank you. Uh, I take the request of the uh, representative of the Russian Federation and ask that we observe a minute of silence to honour the dead of Srebrenica. I give the floor again to the representative of the Russian Federation. Господин председатель, в ходе Балканского кризиса регион стал свидетелем различных жестоких преступлений, включая военные преступления, преступления против человечности и этнические чистки. Российская Федерация последовательно выступает за расследование всех преступлений, совершенных в ходе конфликта в Боснии и Герцеговине в отношении всех этнических групп, включая башников, сербов и хорватов. Нужно ли задаваться вопросом, кто из них пострадал больше? Если взглянуть на итог всего, по сути, десятилетнего конфликта на территории бывшей Югославии, когда сотни тысяч сербов оказались изгнанными из мест своего традиционного проживания, то нельзя не прийти к выводу, что они пострадали, по крайней мере, не меньше других. На сегодня перед регионом и миром стоит принципиально важная задача – добиться полного примирения и успокоения ситуации в Боснии и Герцеговине. Именно поэтому мы продвигаем инициативу, достойно отметить 20-летие Дейтонского мирного соглашения шагами, направленными не на разъединение, а на сплочение всех народов региона с тем, чтобы Балканы могли поступательно двигаться в сторону большей стабильности, безопасности и межэтнического мира. Господин председатель, когда делегация Боснии и Герцеговины впервые обратилась к нам о необходимости отметить в ООН 20-летие трагедии в Сребрянице, мы согласились в том, что это надо сделать достойно, с учетом особой чувствительности темы для народов, проживающих в Боснии и Герцеговине и в регионе в целом. Мы говорили о том, что сейчас необходимо подчеркивать пройденный позитивный путь и смотреть в будущее. Такого же рода соображения поначалу озвучила и делегация Соединенного Королевства, заявившие о намерении подготовить соответствующий проект резолюции Совета безопасности ООН. Однако реализация данной инициативы показала, что она идет совсем в ином направлении. Внесенный делегацией Соединенного Королевства проект оказался неконструктивным, конфронтационным и политически мотивированным. Он содержал значительные перекосы, в результате которых вина за прошедшее возлагается по сути только на один народ. Подход, в соответствии с которым из всех военных преступлений вычленяется лишь одно, абсолютно неправомерен и чреват усилением и без того глубокого раскола боснийского общества. Мы с самого начала дискуссии стремились придать документу сбалансированный характер. Нами был предложен альтернативный вариант, базирующийся на устремленной в будущее логике. Однако наши ключевые положения были по существу проигнорированы. Более того, годовщина трагических событий в Сребренице была использована авторами резолюции для того, чтобы под шумок внедрить в нее некоторые несогласованные на межгосударственном уровне концепции и интрузивные правозащитные подходы, 
чреватые вмешательством во внутренние дела государств. Преданные огласки и заранее разрекламированный британский проект сразу же вызвал крайне болезненную реакцию в Боснии и Герцеговине и за ее пределами. Диаметрально противоположные по содержанию обращения от различных представителей многоэтнического и многоконфессионального боснийского общества лишь укрепили нас во мнении, что такой документ, будь он принят, делу мира на Балканах служить не будет, а лишь еще больше разбередит старые раны, обрекая этот регион на консервацию напряженности и отдаляя перспективы установления устойчивого мира. Эта реакция, в частности, нашла свое отражение в письмах, которые были направлены в адрес членов Совета Безопасности и Генерального секретаря ООН, сербским членам Президиума БИГ, президентом Республики Сербской, а также президентом и министром иностранных дел Сербии. Получили такие обращения и мы. Данная тема стала предметом острой полемики в Боснии и Герцеговине. Настолько, что можно говорить о реальной угрозе подрыва стабильности страны, об утрате с таким трудом наработанных достижений в реализации Дейтонского соглашения. Кроме того, в нынешнем более широком контексте нельзя не усматривать в предложенном проекте попытки политического давления на Баню Луку и Белград. Господин председатель, мы убеждены, что роль Совета безопасности ООН должна состоять в том, чтобы укреплять устои международного мира и безопасности, а не расшатывать их. Каждый должен заниматься своим делом. Пусть историки анализируют перипетии конфликтов бывшей Югославии и его генезис включая роль в его возникновении отдельных стран и союзов, принимавших поспешные решения. Пусть ученые помогут секретариату ООН и международному сообществу понять, где слабо проявила себя наша организация. Но давайте не будем погружать Совет Безопасности в исторические события. Слишком много нерешенных проблем предъявляет нам современность. Пусть занимаются своим делом, дают необходимые оценки и выносят приговоры судебной инстанции. МТБЮ и национальные суды. Правосудие должно восторжествовать. Все преступники, вне зависимости от их этнической или религиозной принадлежности, должны понести то наказание, которое они заслужили. Господин председатель, в условиях отсутствия консенсуса по данному вопросу в самой Боснии и Герцеговине, а как известно, парламент этой страны не смог прийти к единому мнению, равно как и члены президиума Боснии и Герцеговине, Принятие в нынешнем виде резолюции Советом Безопасности ООН стало бы абсолютно контрпродуктивным шагом, обострило бы ситуацию в регионе. 11 июля в Серебрянице состоится большое траурное мероприятие. Принципиально важно, что в нем будет участвовать и руководство Сербии. Было бы неверно, если бы мы, Совет Безопасности ООН, политически предварили это событие принятием деструктивного документа либо демонстрацией раскола среди членов Совета. Поэтому мы призываем авторов проекта и вас, господин председатель, не ставить его на голосование. В противном случае мы будем вынуждены проголосовать против по мотивам, изложенным выше. При этом наше негативное голосование, если оно все же окажется неизбежным, отнюдь не будет означать, что мы глухи к страданиям родственников жертв трагедии как в Серебрянице, так и в других районах Боснии и Герцеговины. Мы сами прошли через многое. Господин председатель, Россия и впредь будет прилагать самые энергичные усилия по последовательному осуществлению Дейтонского мирного соглашения, эффективно содействовать дальнейшей нормализации ситуации в Балканском регионе, примирению, выстраиванию там подлинной системы коллективной безопасности, способствовать укреплению климата доверия и сотрудничества. Полагаем, что к этому должны стремиться мы все. Господин председатель, я хотел бы повторить свое предложение не ставить лежащий на столе членов Совета проект на голосование. Благодарю вас. Thank 强行推动表决尚存重大分歧的决议草案，与推动波黑国内和地区各国家和解的精神不符，也影响安理会会员的团结。中方认为，安理会成员完全可以继续就决议草案事交换意见。
，不应匆忙采取行动。谢谢主席。I thank the representative of China for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. President. The draft before us is a balanced text. Um, we have worked very, very hard to make sure that it is so um, and to make sure that it remembers the past respectfully and sensitively. Let me be clear, there were victims on all sides and this is clearly set out in the text. Crimes were committed against all sides and by all sides. Again, this is clear in the text. This draft does not accuse the Serb people. Instead, the draft supports reconciliation, and recognition of the past is a prerequisite for that. It also calls for the UN and for all of us to learn the lessons from and act on the painful lessons from the genocide at Srebrenica. Mr. President, colleagues, you all know how hard we have worked to find consensus on this text. We have been working on this for over a month, and we have delayed this from yesterday until today in order to make that possibility have the best chance of success. We thank you all for your support and your patience while we did that. You will also know that at the heart of the differences in our respective positions, there is an unbridgeable gap. The horrific events at Srebrenica amounted to a genocide. That is not a verdict that the Security Council is seeking to establish, but a verdict that is clearly set out in judgments from the ICTY and the ICJ. <coughs> to call it anything else now will hinder and not help reconciliation. And that is why there are many voices from the region that are calling for us to proceed and to vote and to honor the victims as we do so. And for that reason, I think it is vital now that we proceed to a vote. Thank you. Thank you. So the principal sponsor of the resolution has asked that we proceed to a vote now. I shall now put the resolution to the vote. Will those in favour of draft the draft resolution contained in document S-2015-508 please raise their hand? Those against? Abstentions? The result of the voting is as follows. 10 votes in favour, one vote against, four abstentions. The draft resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member of the Council. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General Eliason and High Commissioner Zaid for your powerful presentations. I was a 24-year-old reporter in July 1995, living in Sarajevo when the Bosnian Serbs made their move on Srebrenica. I was there when a few days after the Srebrenica safe area fell, a colleague first told me about reports of mass executions. No, was all I could say. No. Even having lived in a war zone and under siege, and even having seen innumerable atrocities, I couldn't bring myself to believe that Bosnian Serb forces would execute every Muslim man and boy in their custody. For all of the brutality of a horrific war, this was a singular horror. It was genocide, a fact now proven again and again by international tribunals. When I learned that Russia was planning to veto the UN Security Council resolution commemorating the genocide in Srebrenica, I confess I had a similar reaction. No, 
I said. No. Why would Russia vote to deny recognition of the Srebrenica genocide? Today's vote mattered. It mattered hugely to the families of the victims of the Srebrenica genocide. Russia's veto is heartbreaking for those families. And it is a further stain on this council's record. I spent the 10th and the 15th anniversaries of the genocide in Srebrenica there, in Srebrenica. In 2005, I met up with my former colleague, journalist David Rode, who is here with us today. In August 1995, days after the massacres, it was David who discovered a leg protruding from a mass gravesite in the woods and fields of Novakashiba. Subsequently, he discovered a pile of canes and another pile of eyeglasses. Canes of the old men who had been executed for one reason, because they were Bosnian Muslim. Canes. In 2005, David and I joined the Bosnian families of those who had been massacred as they walked along the route that many of Srebrenica's Muslim men and boys had taken while fleeing the fallen safe area. The families were tracing their loved one's journey in reverse. All along the route, although it was 10 years since the genocide, we came across the human remains of the victims. Scraps of clothing, shoes, discarded IDs, and even scattered bone fragments protruding from the earth. In 2010, when I led a US presidential delegation to Srebrenica on behalf of President Obama, I retraced just the final leg of that journey again. Interspersed among those on the march were many children of those who had been killed in Srebrenica. Most were teenage girls and young women who had grown up without fathers and brothers. There were far fewer young men than women on the walk, a chilling result of the fact that so many young boys had been executed. Remains were still being dug up and mourned. One mother I met in Srebrenica was bearing the fourth of her five sons at a mass grave site in the center of town. She was still searching for the remains of her fifth. It is that mother's truth and pain that was vetoed by Russia today. Why should we continue to retrace victims' harrowing journey? Or why, for that matter, do we continue to gather, whether it's here at the UN or in Srebrenica, to mark this day and to retell these gut-wrenching accounts of the victims. We revisit so that we can try to learn from our collective failure. And by ours, I mean the world's, the Security Council's, and particularly those governments, including mine, that had the power to prevent what happened but didn't. Bosnians believed that they would be protected by a UN flag and by the principles it stood for. They took refuge in a place literally called a safe area. Yet when Bosnian Serb forces probed the UN's willingness to protect civilians under its watch, the peacekeepers melted away. And the Bosnian Serbs pressed ahead. First they cut off fuel and other essential supplies, then they attacked the peacekeepers' outposts. Then they disarmed and humiliated the peacekeepers themselves. Promised NATO airstrikes never materialized. Now, we also commemorate Srebrenica to show our ongoing commitment to hold accountable the perpetrators of these atrocities. The perpetrators of the genocide in Srebrenica killed more than 8,000 Muslim men and boys and raped countless women and girls, in part because they felt confident that they would never be punished. That is why it is so important that all of the indicted masterminds and commanders of the genocide in Srebrenica most notably, Rako Mladic and Radovan Karadzic are now facing trial for their crimes in The Hague.
This shows that the arm of justice is long and that abusive regimes from the Assad regime that gasses its own people to the North Korean government that works its people to death in gulags will one day have to answer for their atrocities. Now, as we saw today, some political leaders and groups deny that genocide took place in Srebrenica or fail to wish to recognize it. Bosnian Serb leader Milorad Dodik last month called the genocide, quote, the biggest sham of the 20th century, end quote. We have heard such statements from Holocaust deniers and even more recently from Rwandan genocide deniers. Individuals who used such phrases humiliate themselves and they embarrass and mislead those they claim to represent. Genocide happened in Srebrenica. That is the conclusion reached by both the International Cri Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and the International Court of Justice based on mounds and mounds of evidence. The refusal to acknowledge that genocide occurred is not only deeply hurtful to the victims and their families who have already endured so much, but it is the obstacle to reconciliation. Imagine being the mother of those five sons killed in the Srebrenica genocide and being told that a denial of the genocide will advance reconciliation. It is madness, a madness motivated by a similar negation of the Bosnian Muslim experience that helped fuel the slaughter at Srebrenica in the first place. So long as the truth is denied, whether here in this council or in the region, there can be no meaningful reconciliation. Imagine us, imagine if this were our families. Would we reconcile when our experience was being denied? There's no stability in genocide denial. This council did everything in its power to get Russia on board with this simple resolution, which does not even name the perpetrators. But Russia had a red line. The resolution could not reference the genocide in Srebrenica. It could not reference a fact. 20 years ago, the international community failed to protect the people taking refuge in Srebrenica, and the result was genocide. Today, because of Russia's refusal to call what happened in Srebrenica by its rightful name, genocide, the council is again failing to live up to its responsibility. This is a veto of a well-established fact documented by hundreds of thousands of pages of witness testimony, photographic evidence, and physical forensic evidence of the kind I encountered on my walks. The Rwandan genocide, like the Srebrenica genocide, is an established fact. Would anybody here dream of arguing that we should not mark the Rwandan genocide? Indeed, that we should deny it because a group of genocide deniers said it might undermine reconciliation or stability. Does Holocaust denial advance reconciliation? Or do we all agree that recognition and remembrance are the key, a critical ingredient to moving forward? Everyone here knows the answer to these questions. Yet a number of countries today have chosen to remain neutral on genocide recognition by abstaining from supporting this resolution. If the mothers of the boys executed in Srebrenica, boys executed just because they were Bosnian Muslims, were here today, they would ask how anybody could abstain on their reality. But far worse, they would ask how any country could use the privilege of permanent membership on this council to negate entirely what has happened to them. The crime of genocide is the crime that the United Nations Genocide Convention was written and ratified to prevent and punish. The crime of genocide in Srebrenica is what the Genocide Convention, which all of us have ratified, exists to prevent and punish. Reconciliation cannot be built by bearing the dark parts of one's history, however unsettling they may be. In the hearings at the ICTY, perpetrators and victims alike testified to how heavy machinery was brought in to dig up the earth to bury victims even before the executions had occurred. So as the victims, many of them blindfolded, their hands bound, were led to their death, they heard not only gunshots and cries, but also the roar of bulldozers digging the mass graves that would eventually 
bury them. I just want to tell one story in closing. Ramiz Nukic nearly ended up in one of those mass graves. As Bosnian Serb forces approached Podachari in July 1995, he said goodbye to his wife and children and fled into the forest with his father, brother, and thousands of other Bosnian men and boys. He shared his story recently with a reporter. When the men and boys paused briefly at the top of a hill, tanks and guns opened fire. His father and brother were killed immediately along with others. Nukic himself managed to escape, eventually finding his way to a refugee camp. In 1999, Nukic returned to Potocari and found his way back to that hill. He found bloodied clothes and shoes and three skeletons there, but none belonged to his family. Since then, he has spent every single day searching the woods around Srebrenica for victims' remains. What began as a search for his father and brother has become a search for the remains of all victims. He said that a day rarely goes by that he does not find some remains, which he reports to Bosnia's Institute for Missing Persons, which then tests the bone's DNA against a network of survivors. The identification is important for victims' families, particularly those who've never been able to confirm what happened to their loved ones, expecting they were killed but having nothing tangible to prove it. The remains help give them a long overdue sense of closure. Thanks to Nukic, many bones got their names, a staffer at the Institute said. This year, partial remains of Nukic's father were finally found, though not by him, in a mass grave. Nukic will bury his father on Saturday in Srebrenica, one of 136 newly identified victims to be buried alongside the 6,241 victims already interred in a joint cemetery there. He will be joined by thousands of mourners who assemble each year to mark the genocide. On recovering part of his own father, Nukic said, quote, although he is not complete, I will bury him and I will know where his grave is, end quote. He said he intends to keep searching for the victims, the remains of other victims for as long as he lives. We too must continue to search relentlessly for the full truth about Srebrenica. The remains of more than 1,000 victims are still out there. They continue to haunt us and we cannot rest until they are all found. Only by unearthing these truths and only by recognizing this genocide, the gravity of this genocide, and how we outside failed to prevent it, will we be able to help the region move beyond such a dark part of its history, help it walk toward greater reconciliation, which we all seek, and live up to the promise of preventing genocide in our time. Thank you. I thank the representative of the United States for her statement. I now give the floor to the representative of France. Monsieur le Président, la France regrette profondément l'opposition de la Russie à l'adoption d'une résolution dont le but était d'honorer la mémoire de toutes les victimes du génocide de Srebrenica, mais aussi de toutes les victimes innocentes de tous bords durant l'ensemble du conflit en Bosnie-Herzégovine, et par là même de rappeler la responsabilité particulière de ce Conseil pour prévenir les massacres. Un tel sujet méritait l'unanimité du Conseil. Mais la Russie, en s'opposant à cette résolution, empêche toute expression du Conseil destinée à accompagner les moments de recueillement et de mémoire organisés pour les victimes du génocide et du conflit en Bosnie-Herzégovine. Monsieur le Président, sous couvert de respect d'une mémoire particulière, la Russie s'oppose à ce que le Conseil enjoigne aux partis de dépasser les souffrances du passé et de s'engager résolument sur le chemin de la réconciliation. La réconciliation doit passer par la reconnaissance de la réalité du génocide commis à Srebrenica il y a 20 ans, qualifié comme tel par les juridictions internationales, le Tribunal pénal international pour l'ex-Yougoslavie et la Cour internationale de justice. La justice, on ne le répétera jamais assez, est bien la condition de la réconciliation et de la paix. Ce texte que nous avons naturellement soutenu dès l'origine, 
avait certes un but mémoriel, mais il était aussi tourné vers l'avenir. Il avait en effet aussi pour but de participer à la réconciliation des peuples des Balkans et de les aider à construire un avenir de paix et de sécurité. Nous regrettons profondément l'échec d'aujourd'hui, mais ne baissons pas les bras. Nous devons travailler ensemble sur le chemin de la réconciliation et de la paix. C'est notre responsabilité à tous. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Representative of France. I give the floor now to the Representative of Venezuela. Gracias, señor Presidente. Quisiéramos reafirmar en primer lugar que la República Bolivariana de Venezuela condena de la manera más categórica y enérgica el genocidio cabecido hace 20 años en Srebrenica, así como cualquier crimen de guerra y crimen de lesa humanidad donde quiera sea perpetrado, independientemente de su motivación. A 70 años de la derrota del nazifascismo y su ideología totalitaria, luego del holocausto del pueblo judío y la matanza contra el pueblo ruso-soviético y otros pueblos víctimas del fascismo, el mundo sigue siendo testigo de eventos de genocidio y crímenes de guerra, como los ocurridos en Ruanda, Srebrenica, Irak, Palestina y Chabra y Shatila, entre otros, los cuales cuestionan y ponen en entredicho tanto la efectividad de los mecanismos internacionales establecidos para prevenir esos actos repudiables como nuestra propia condición humana. Nuestro país ha votado a extensión en el presente proyecto de resolución por considerar que no es un texto balanceado, ya que atribuye todas las responsabilidades de los hechos a una de las partes del conflicto, omitiendo las complejidades de la situación. En tal sentido, Venezuela considera que no se puede culpar a todo un pueblo por acciones llevadas a cabo por grupos extremistas movidos por el odio y la intolerancia, escudado bajo las banderas del nacionalismo exacerbado. De igual manera, el mencionado proyecto introduce elementos no consensuados y controversiales en las Naciones Unidas como la noción de responsabilidad de proteger, que desvirtúa el papel primordial del Estado en la promoción y respeto de los derechos humanos, erosionando principios de la Carta de las Naciones Unidas, entre ellos el respeto a la soberanía. Estamos convencidos que la justicia debe ser construida sobre la base de la verdad y en este sentido apoyamos la labor que ha desempeñado el Tribunal Internacional encargado de juzgar a los responsables de atrocidades en el marco del conflicto ocurrido en los territorios que conformaban la antigua Yugoslavia. Por otra parte, debemos tener en cuenta que la propuesta de resolución no gozó del consenso entre las mismas autoridades y pueblos de la región, quienes son, en esencia, los encargados de llevar adelante de manera directa, con el apoyo de la comunidad internacional, el proceso de consolidación de la paz y estabilidad política en esa región. En este sentido, pensamos que esta resolución, en lugar de contribuir a la reconciliación, profundizaría la división entre las comunidades Bosnia, Serbia y Croata, que hacen vida en Bosnia y Herzegovina, las cuales tienen que construir un futuro común fundado en la paz, la solidaridad, el diálogo y el respeto a los derechos humanos. La labor de las Naciones Unidas ha de estar dirigida a fomentar el entendimiento entre los pueblos de la región balcánica. Es por ello que abogamos por la reconciliación entre las partes y a tal fin resulta de suma importancia trabajar hacia el futuro para continuar con la labor que se inició en Dayton, a través de la implementación del Acuerdo Marco General de Paz, producto de un consenso político entre las partes involucradas. Gracias, Presidente. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Mr. President, and all abstain in today's vote on the resolution tablets by UK of Srebrenica for the following reasons. 
first of all, Angola has not a post one of Daniel on the issue. Whatever we may call mass murder, mass atrocity, or genocide, the subject matter is that we acknowledge that on the 11th of July, 1995, extremely grave facts occurred in Srebrenica that amount to a crime of genocide as was recognized by the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. Our fundamental disagreement stems from the fact that the text of the draft resolution should take into account in the same manner the many thousands of victims of massacres from all over the region during the war period in the territory that was later to become the independent state of Bosnia and Herzegovina. On the other side, it was our expectation that the text would take stock of the level of reconciliation and cooperation among the states and the communities in the region and they look forward that is towards the future to healing reconciliation and the, the building of a better food future for all people that geography and history put living together to share the past, the present, and the future. 20 years after the events in the former Yugoslavia, such a resolution does not give any tangible contribution to the ongoing and the still fragile reconciliation process and may have a negative impact on the effort of the responsible leaders of the Balkan state to create a better common future which has already produced significant results. It was our expectation that the final test of the draft resolution would translate a required level of compromise between the members of the Secret Council, permitting a consensual case in which all members will recognize themselves. We will favor a resolution focusing on positive aspects, addressing genuine reconciliation, dealing with the past has lessons to be learned, and seeking a future-oriented approach by helping the region to face the needs of the present and of the future by encouraging, facilitating, and accelerating the process of reconciliation and cooperation in the Balkans. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Angola. There are no further requests for statements after the vote. I now give the floor to members of the Security Council. I give the floor to the representative of Chad. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais tout d'abord vous féliciter, vous-même, Monsieur le Président, ainsi que toute votre équipe, pour l'accession de la Nouvelle-Zélande à la présidence du Conseil et vous souhaiter plein succès dans votre mission. Je remercie Monsieur Yann Elias, son secrétaire général adjoint des Nations Unies, et le prince Zaid Rat. Zaid al Hussein, au commissaire des Nations Unies pour les droits de l'homme, de leur présentation. Le Tchad salue l'organisation de cette séance commémorant les massacres de Srebrenica pour rendre hommage aux victimes, exprimer notre solidarité aux rescapés et encourager les efforts de réconciliation en Bosnie-Herzégovine. Monsieur le Président, en juillet 1995, plus de 8 000 hommes et adolescents musulmans étaient massacrés en trois jours à Srebrenica pendant la guerre en Bosnie-Herzégovine, dans une ville qui avait pourtant été déclarée zone de sécurité par l'ONU et où se trouvait un contingent de casques bleus. Il convient de rappeler que les atrocités de Srebrenica et les pires massacres commis en Europe depuis la Deuxième Guerre mondiale, qualifiée de génocide par la justice internationale. Les victimes de Srebrenica étaient ciblées pour leur identité. 
et les hommes ont été brutalement séparés des femmes et des enfants avant d'être transportés sur des sites préalablement repérés pour y être froidement et méthodiquement massacrés sous le regard du monde entier. Ces massacres pèsent et pèseront toujours sur la conscience collective et la responsabilité de la communauté internationale est accablante pour son silence et son refus d'agir face à ces atrocités. Jusqu'à aujourd'hui, les circonstances dans lesquelles la population de Srebrenica, dans la zone de sécurité, a été abandonnée n'ont pas été totalement élucidées. Il est important de faire un travail de mémoire pour que la vérité soit établie. Nous saluons à cet égard l'effort des pays bas qui ont enquêté sur le comportement de leurs bataillons pendant le massacre de Srebrenica et rendu public plusieurs rapports. Le génocide de Srebrenica a survenu à moins d'un an après celui de Tutsi au Rwanda en 1994, interpelle sérieusement la communauté internationale sur ses moyens d'action et sa capacité de réactivité face aux prémices des crimes de masse. 